Good afternoon, children. Today we will start with a new session. That is the first chapter, chapter number one, chemical reactions and equations. In this chapter, we know that in a chemical reaction, reactants are converted to products. So we write the reactant in on the left hand side and the products on the right hand side. How do we determine that the reaction is taking place? In order to determine the reaction, we have characteristics of chemical reaction. In characteristics of chemical reaction, the first characteristic is evolution of gas. Like in a reaction, if I am doing a reaction in a test tube, and if I am taking a test tube and undergoing with a reaction, if a gas is evolved, in that condition we can determine that the reaction is taking place. In the evolution of gas, various types of gases can be evolved. It's not like a gas is evolving and it will be saying, hi, I am hydrogen. It will not say like that. So, we have to determine which gas is evolving out. So, in order to determine the evolution of gases, the first one is hydrogen gas. While the hydrogen gas, when it will be evolving, if we are bringing a burning matchstick, then it produces fog sound. So, it produces fog sound with burning matchstick. So this is a thing we can see, the observation we can see for determining the presence of hydrogen gas. So it produces fog sound with burning matchstick. Like for an example, if I am taking a test tube and I am putting zinc granules in it and I am pouring H2SO4 that is sulfuric acid into it. So what will happen? This zinc will be reacting ZnH2SO4 and it will form zinc sulfate that is ZnSO4 and hydrogen gas is evolved. This hydrogen gas, when it is evolved, if we are bringing a burning matchstick towards it, so this burning matchstick when it is brought towards the test tube, it will produce pop sound. So this way we can determine that hydrogen gas is evolved in it. Now, in this reaction, I have already discussed in the class that zinc plus 2 is present. Sulfate is SO4 minus 2. This 2 and 2 is cancelled out and there is no charge about so it will form ZnSO4, zinc sulfate. So now for determining the presence of CO2 gas that is carbon dioxide gas. This gas will produce brisk effervescence and will turn Lime water milky. Lime water milky. What is brisk effervescence? You might have seen that when we open the cold drink bottle, in that condition the effervescence or the bubbles of CO2 gas is evolved. That is effervescence. The term, specific term for it is brisk effervescence. This brisk effervescence, this is evolved and if we are passing the lime water, this lime water is not lime juice. This is calcium hydroxide. Echo solution of calcium hydroxide is known as lime water. So this is CaOH gold twice, that is calcium hydroxide. If CO2 is passed through this, that is carbon dioxide is passed through the lime water, then it will be forming CaCO3 and it turns milky. And along with that, H2O is evolved. In order to learn this reaction, I am telling you how you can learn this reaction. This is Ca. Two OH are there. I am writing like this. And along with that, CO2 is there. So it will be reacting like this and it forms Ca. CO2 and one oxygen, it forms CaCO3 plus H and OH will form H2O. So you can say that it will form CaCO3 and H2O. This is calcium carbonate will be, which will be appearing in a milky form. So that's why we say that lime water turns milky. So lime water turns milky in this state. So you have to learn this reaction that is calcium hydroxide on passing through CO2. It turns milky due to calcium carbonate. I can write down the name. This is calcium hydroxide which is also known as lime water when it is in dilute state. And this is calcium carbonate. Due to the formation of calcium carbonate, it turns milky. Now, being very precise about it, during the board examination, 
mostly this type of question is asked the question is asked in this form a compound when passed a compound uh, or an aqueous solution of a compound when passed through co2 then it turns lime water milky or then it uh, changes the aqueous solution of the compound milky so you have to answer the compound or the aqueous solution of the compound if they are asking for the compound then that is cao because it reacts with h2 to form caoh cold wise if they are asking for the aqueous solution then this is caoh cold wise which reacts with co2 to form lime water milky so this is both the reaction you should know for answering this question now moving ahead with this we are having a condition of sulfur dioxide gas how you will determine the gas evolved with sulfur dioxide it can be determined with the burning sulfur like smell burning sulfur like smell is nothing special matches the light and if we will smelling that smell then that is burning sulfur like smell so burning sulfur like smell is produced due to sulfur dioxide gas now cno gas is there then it will be colorless gas with pungent smell a colorless gas will be evolved with pungent smell pungent smell is the suffocating smell so it produces colorless gas with pungent smell that is suffocating smell now if we are producing with a gas no2 that is nitrogen dioxide then reddish brown fumes reddish brown fumes will be liberated with pungent smell in order to learn you can learn both these together so that there will not be any confusion for chlorine it will be colorless gas and for no2 it will be reddish brown gas so you have to learn these along with that one more that is h2s gas which can be also asked sometimes it produces rotten egg like smell if you are asked with on a reaction of two compounds a gas with a rotten egg like smell is evolved determine the gas then that is h2s so you can determine the gas h2s so these are the gases again i am repeating the first one is hydrogen gas it produces pop sound with very basic next is co2 gas it produces brisk effervescence and turns lime water milky lime water is aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide coh hold twice plus co2 this will give milkiness due to calcium carbonate and h2o will be produced now next is burning sulfur like smell is due to sulfur dioxide and colorless gas with pungent smell is evolved that is chlorine that is cl2 gas and if reddish brown gas with suffocating or pungent smell then that will be no2 that is nitrogen dioxide and if rotten egg like smell is there then that is h2s so kindly learn all these because these are the important gases which are evolved and these are the characteristic features which can be observed by us now this was the first characteristics of chemical reaction by which we can determine that a chemical reaction is taking place in order to determine the chemical reaction we can also determine it with the help of another characteristics that is change in temperature
reaction, the beaker gets chilled. So that means it is absorbing all the heat. That's why it is becoming chilled. Or I can also say that if I am giving the heat to the reaction mixture, I have tested it. I have also made it warm. So I am giving heat to the reaction mixture. Then that means also heat is absorbed. So endothermic and exothermic has only one difference. That is when heat is evolved, that is exothermic, and when heat is absorbed, that is endothermic. You have to learn to do examples of both. First is exothermic. In exothermic, example number one. That is when calcium oxide, this is known as quick lime, is added with water, it forms calcium hydroxide. This is known as slate lime. Just now I told you that this is also known as lime water because when slate lime is made more dilute, then that will be forming the lime water. So lime water can be formed by diluting the slate lime. So here. Quick lime when added with water then forms slate lime. If this heat is evolved, to be more based on the application, how does it work? Here, earlier while when we were like kids, at that time it was we used for whitewashing purpose. So you might not have heard about it because nowadays paints, Asian paints and all are used. So before whitewashing were done. So in that condition, what was usually done on earlier days was they used to take earthen pot and then calcium oxide is kept in the earthen pot and then water is added to it. This calcium oxide or quick lime is added with water. This calcium oxide is chuna, which is known in the Hindi term. We used to say chuna. This is added with water. So in that condition, lot of heat is evolved and then bubbles comes out. It produces lot of bubbles and smoke, and then this will be becoming calcium hydroxide. It is reacting with water and it is forming calcium hydroxide. This solution is put in the walls, and then on taking CO2 from this atmosphere, it turns to calcium carbonate and H2O, due to which the shine comes after whitewashing, due to the formation of calcium carbonate. So we can say that this is normal procedure. Calcium oxide or chuna, it is quick lime. It is kept in a earthen pot. Why it is kept in an earthen pot is if you are not keeping this in the earthen pot and you are putting in a plastic bucket, then you are very precise. The heat will be evolved and it will be making the plastic bucket to smell down or mold down. So that's why we used to do it in the earthen pot because earthen pot can absorb lot of heat. So. Other part is used, calcium oxide is put, and water is added. Then it forms calcium hydroxide. This calcium hydroxide, which is formed when we are putting painting it on the walls, this calcium hydroxide will be absorbing the CO2 from the atmosphere, and this will form calcium carbonate due to which the milkiness or the whiteness with the shine, because calcium carbonate is also present in marble. So limestone is. calcium carbonate so this is uh, also producing calcium carbonate is producing shine that's why we can see the shine in the walls so so this was the procedure and in this heat is evolved that's why it is exothermic reaction now we are going we are going forward with one example of endothermic so first example of endothermic is When we are undergoing a reaction of ammonium chloride and barium hydroxide, if you are not precise with the formation, I will let you know. This is NH four positive ammonium, Cl negative chloride, Ba plus two barium, OH minus hydroxide. I am just crossing it over so it will form NH four Cl. I'm crossing it over. It will form BaOH cold twice. So I have to undergo with a displacement, double displacement reaction. Here, positive will go with this negative, and this positive will go with this negative. Simple. So NH4 positive will go with OH negative, and Ba plus two will go with Cl negative. So I am just crossing it, and it will be forming NH4OH plus. BaCl2. This is a 
ammonium hydroxide and barium chloride in this the reaction mixture becomes chilled so this cooling effect of the beaker shows that it is absorbing the heat so that's why it is an endothermic reaction for moving to the another example of exothermic i can also say the reaction that is zinc plus h2so4 on reaction gives znso4 plus h2 which we have discussed in the initial time for evolution of hydrogen gas this beaker also gets hot due to the liberation of heat or evolution of heat that's why we can say that this is exothermic reaction here ammonium hydroxide formation is always an endothermic reaction and the reaction mixture will be making the beaker chill here we can say as a usual thing here rise in temperature takes place so here rise in temperature takes place and here fall in temperature i am saying that the reaction mixture is chill so here it is fall in temperature so this is a method to determine the rise in temperature in exothermic reaction and fall in temperature in endothermic reaction moving forward i will just make a quick revision of this change in temperature can be of two types first is exothermic another is endothermic in exothermic reaction the heat is evolved and or released with the rise in temperature it will take place and in endothermic reaction heat is absorbed or fall in temperature takes place here calcium oxide quick lime example of exothermic is quick lime when added to water then it forms slake lime and heat is evolved and zinc when added to h2so4 then zinc sulfated hydrogen gas is evolved along with the heat so these are exothermic reaction heat is absorbed here the example of ammonium hydroxide formation this will call fall in temperature heat to fall in temperature like ammonium chloride plus barium hydroxide gives ammonium hydroxide plus barium chloride so this is the way you can undergo with the reactions so the two we have discussed first one is evolution of gas and the second one is change in temperature now moving forward with this we are having the characteristics number third that is change in color sometimes the color also changes this can also show us that the reaction is taking place in the reaction mixture so the chemical change can be seen by the third one that is change in color change in color how you can determine you can pursue it as a magic like i am taking citric acid like lemon juice i am taking citric acid which is present in the lemon juice like i have taken a lemon juice containing citric acid with citric acid and in citric acid i am putting potassium permanganate potassium permanganate is kno4 the formula is potassium k magnate is permanganate is mno4 minus 1 so it is kno4 i will be more precise this is k positive potassium and permanganate formula is mno4 minus 1 so i just cross it it will form kmno4 so here the potassium permanganate is added this potassium permanganate is pink in color it is pink but when you are pouring this potassium permanganate in the citric acid which is colorless it will change to colorless solution so the pink color disappears so during the reaction what will happen the pink color disappears so this can be an example of change in color you need not have to understand or learn the formula of citric acid you just have to understand only one thing that is on pouring kmno4 into citric acid the pink color of the kmno4 disappears or it decolorizes the reaction mixture now this is example number 1 when you need not have to show the reaction you can write this one this as an example now example number 2 this is an important reaction <laughs> here it is if potassium chloride reacts with lead iodide or we can say we can usually take the different one that 
potassium iodide and lead chloride to make it more precise. So here potassium iodide and lead chloride. What is potassium? That is K positive. Iodide is I negative and lead is Pb plus 2 and chloride is Cl negative. So I am crossing it. So it will be producing K plus and I negative that is Ki plus lead is Pb and Cl. So it will be forming a formula of PbCl2. When I am adding these two, I know that this is a double displacement reaction. In double displacement reaction, potassium will go with chloride. So it is potassium chloride and it will form lead with iodide. So here it is lead iodide. Here this is potassium chloride. So potassium is K plus Cl minus. So it will form KCl. Now it is lead Pb plus 2 and I minus 1. So it will form Pb I2. Here these two solutions are colorless. This is colorless and this one is also colorless. But on adding these two it will be producing a white precipitate. We will study about the precipitate in the next one. So it will form a yellow precipitate. Like precipitate is formed. So here yellow precipitate is formed of lead iodide. Yellow precipitate of lead iodide is formed. This yellow precipitate is the shows the change in color. So change in color from potassium iodide with lead chloride form lead iodide which is yellow precipitate and this is also potassium chloride. This is colorless, this is colorless but the lead iodide produced is yellow in color. So this forms a change in color. So this shows that the reaction is taking place in this. So I am going with the revision. So third one is change in color. First example we have to put KMnO4 which is, which is pink in color that is potassium per magnet into the solution of citric acid which, may, which is present in the lemon juice. So in that condition this pink color disappears as we will be pouring it in, into the citric acid. Then the pink color disappears that is example number one. But you need not have to show the reaction you can write down this reaction. So then again in the this example other than this sec, first example we have the second example that is potassium iodide with lead chloride form potassium chloride plus lead iodide. This lead iodide forms yellow precipitate. So this yellow precipitate is formed due to the presence of lead iodide. So this reaction can be written to show the change in color. Now we are moving to the next easiest one that is change in state. For determining the change in state, it is very easy. You have seen a burning candle. So candle is in which state? It is in solid state. So a solid candle wax <coughs> when undergo reaction or burning, then it changes to candle wax liquid. And then after that it changes to CO2 gas. This CO2 gas produced and water vapor produced, water vapor produced shows the change in state. So state changes from solid to liquid to gas. So this also shows that chemical reaction is undergone in this. Now, so that was the change in state. So this one change in state. Now the last one that is formation of precipitate. So the last characteristics of chemical reaction is the important one that is formation of precipitate. Now we will discuss what is formation of precipitate. Formation of precipitate involves the precipitate formation. So now the term is precipitate. We can also write PPT as a symbol or a symbol is a downward arrow. This shows the precipitate. So here what happens? What is precipitate? It is an insoluble solid mass insoluble solid mass over the solution. Over the solution. Like if I am having a test tube and here in the over the solution if I am having a precipitate. So this is insoluble solid mass. So that is known as precipitate. This precipitate formation also shows that the chemical reaction is taking place. Here also you can use the same example which you have to use in changing color. 
that was potassium iodide plus lead chloride gives potassium chloride plus lead iodide and at that time i told you this is yellow precipitate it is good that you learn less examples for this but the same examples so that it can be easier for you to just learn all the reactions so this forms lead iodide which is a yellow precipitate so this precipitate is formed with this again we can use just learn any two examples so that if any examples ask then also you can answer it i'm writing you one more example in this i have used sodium sulfate how i made this na plus 1 so4 minus 2 and i have crossed it so it forms na2so4 plus bacl2 how i this i have made this ba is plus 2 Cl is minus one. I have crossed it. It forms barium chloride BaCl2. Now I am going with the reaction. This is also a double displacement reaction. So here, double displacement reaction takes place. That means I am displacing two types. Like I have displaced one iodide from here to here and Cl from here to here. Similarly, I have displaced SO4 from here to here and Cl from here to here. So what will form? Na plus and Cl minus. so that will be forming sodium chloride nacl plus ba plus 2 and so4 minus 2 so this 2 and 2 will be cancelled and it will be forming baso4 kindly learn that this baso4 has white precipitate this is white precipitate so these are the two examples of precipitate formation sodium sulfate plus barium chloride gives sodium chloride plus barium sulfate so that's all for the characteristics of chemical reaction i will be dealing with the next topic in the next session